The T-26 was the Soviet Union's primary light infantry tank of the 1930s, derived from the British Vickers six-ton design. Entering service in 1931-32, it evolved from a two-turret machine gun tank to the single-turret Model 1933 armed with a 45mm 20K cannon. The tank featured thin 15mm armor, an eight-cylinder gas engine producing 90 horsepower, and weighed 9.6 tons with speeds around 30 km per hour. The 45mm gun could penetrate approximately 30 millimeters of armor at 500 meters. Over over 10,300 units were produced from 1931 to 1941, making it the most numerous Soviet tank of the interwar period. The T-26 fought in Spain, border conflicts with Japan, and the Winter War, where its thin armor proved vulnerable. By Operation Barbarossa, around 10,000 T-26s comprised roughly 40% of tanks in the European USSR. German 37mm anti-tank guns easily penetrated the T-26's armor well beyond 500 meters causing catastrophic losses in 1941. By 1942 to 43, survivors were relegated to secondary theaters. The BT-2 was the first Soviet fast tank. Based on American engineer J. Walter Christie's convertible design, the Christie suspension featured large road wheels allowing the tank to drive without tracks, achieving speeds over 50 km per hour on tracks and theoretically 80 to 100 km per hour on wheels. The Red Army envisioned BTs as shock troops for deep operations. However, BTs traded armor for speed with only 13mm front armor. Armed with a 37mm gun or twin machine guns, the BT-2 had a three-man crew and weighed 11.5 tons. Around 620 were produced at Kharkov from 1932-3030. The BT-5 improved on the BT-2 with a 45mm 20K gun providing real anti-tank capability. Armor remained around 13mm. The Mikulin M17 engine delivered 400 to 450 horsepower, propelling its 11.5-ton weight to high speeds. About 1,880 were built from 1933 to 35. The BT-7 featured a new hull with sloped front glasses and armor reaching 20 mm maximum. The BT-7M introduced the V2 diesel engine of 500 horsepower, later famous in the T-34. Diesel offered better range and reduced fire risk. Total production reached approximately 5,500 units from 1935 to 1941. By June 1941, the Red Army had about 2,500 BT-7s in western districts. Many were lost in ill-coordinated counterattacks or broke down. The BT series achieved speeds of 50 to 60 km per hour cross-country, but thin 13 to 20 mm armor and complex suspension limited effectiveness. The greatest legacy was the innovative suspension and diesel engine carried over to the T-34. The T-28 was a unique three-turret tank developed as a breakthrough tank in the early 1930s. The central turret mounted a 76.2 mm KT-28 howitzer, while two smaller turrets housed 45 mm guns. The 28-ton tank measured 7.4 meters long with a crew of 6 to 7 and armor of 20 to 30 mm initially, upgraded to 50 to 80 mm on some variants. A 500 horsepower engine managed 23 to 27 kilometers per hour. Only 503 were built from 1933 to 1940 at Kirov factory. The T-28 saw combat in the Winter War, where about 120 were deployed against Finnish fortifications. Up-armored variants performed better with HE shells useful against bunkers. By June 1941, around 200 T-28s remained, mostly near the Baltic and Leningrad. Most were lost by the end of 1941 due to combat or breakdown. The T-28 was formidable against soft targets, but suffered from mechanical complexity, thin armor, and a large silhouette making it mostly obsolete by 1941. The T-34 was the most influential Soviet tank of World War II, representing a revolutionary combination of firepower, armor, and mobility. Development began in the late 1930s with prototypes appearing in 1939. The T-34's sloped armor provided better protection. The front glassus was 45 mm at 60 degrees from vertical. Wide 500 mm tracks gave excellent mobility over soft terrain. The V2 diesel engine produced 500 horsepower, reliable and fuel efficient. Main armament was the F-34 76.2 mm gun that could penetrate approximately 69 mm of armor at 500 meters. The tank weighed 26.5 tons initially, reaching 30.9 tons by Model 1 1943. With a crew of four, when Germany invaded in June 1941, the T-34 shocked German forces. However, early models had significant weaknesses. The two-man turret meant the commander also served as gunner. Vision devices were poor. Lack of radios in most tanks severely hampered coordination. The transmission required a mallet to shift gears in early models. Despite these flaws, the design remained in production with improvements throughout the war. Model 1943 added a commander's cupola. By 1942, over 12,000 were built peaking in 1944 with more than 1,200 per month. The T-34 fought in every major engagement from border battles through Moscow, Stalingrad, 
Kursk, and to Berlin. At Kursk in July 1943, approximately 850 participated at Prokhorovka. By 1943, the 76mm gun was increasingly inadequate against Panther and Tiger frontal armor. The T-34-85 was created by late 1943 because the 76mm gun was no longer sufficient, featuring an 85mm Zayas S-53 gun in a new larger three-man turret. This gave the tank a dedicated commander for the first time, dramatically improving combat effectiveness. The 85mm gun could penetrate approximately 102mm at 500m, reliably knocking out Panthers from the side and Tigers except for thickest frontal armor. Weight increased to 32 tons. First production came in December 1943 with over 11,000 built in 1944 alone. The T-34-85 proved highly effective in final campaigns, participating in Operation Bagration in summer 1944 with over 2,000 in action. By 1945, it comprised approximately 55% of Soviet tank strength. In the Far East against Japan in August 1945, T-34-85s quickly overcame Japanese armor. Total T-34 production of all variants exceeded 58,000 units during the war, making it by far the most produced tank of World War II. The T-34's influence on tank design was profound. Its sloped armor, diesel engine, and emphasis on mobility influenced virtually all subsequent designs worldwide. The T-35 was the USSR's pre-war heavy tank, famous for its five turrets. Measuring over 10 meters long with a crew of 11, it featured one main turret with a 76.2 millimeter gun and four smaller turrets, two with 45 millimeter guns and two with machine guns. Development began in 1932 with production running until 1938 yielding only 59 to 61 units, weighing around 45 tons with surprisingly thin armor, 20mm hull sides and 30mm turret fronts. The 500 horsepower M17 engine gave a max speed of 28 to 30 kilometers per hour. When Germany invaded, almost no T-35s made it into actual combat as most broke down from transmission and engine failures. Only a single action near Brody is recorded. The T-35 was essentially a propaganda vehicle featuring prominently in Red Square parades, but tactically useless in World War II. The SMK and T-100 were two turret-heavy prototypes developed in 1939 to replace the T-35. The SMK weighed about 55 tons with armor up to 60 millimeters, while the T-100 weighed around 58 tons. During the Winter War, the SMK was sent to combat trials alongside the prototype KV, where it was immobilized. The KV outperformed both designs, leading Stalin to favor the single-turret approach. These prototypes provided crucial comparisons proving single-turret tanks superior. The KV-1 was the first truly successful Soviet heavy tank of World War II. Two prototypes were built in September 1939 and rushed to Finland, demonstrating near immunity to Finnish guns. The KV-1 model 1939 had revolutionary 75mm frontal armor, impervious to German 3.7cm Pak 36, and largely proof against short 75mm on Panzer IV. Weighing approximately 43 tons with a 600 horsepower V2K diesel engine, it achieved roughly 34 km per hour. Main armament was a 76.2mm gun, initially L11, then F32, standard on Zayas 5 by 1941. The crew was five, though the early turret was cramped with only a two-man turret crew. The KV-1's moment of glory was 1941 when Germans encountered them. Legendary accounts include one KV-2 and KV-1's halting German 6th Panzer Division for two days at Rasenii, Lithuania. The KV-1 was essentially invulnerable to German tank guns in 1941. About 508 were in western districts on June 1941, though many were lost to breakdowns or fuel shortages. By mid-1942, Germans fielded more packed 40 75mm and 88mm guns, making KV armor less impenetrable. The KV-1S introduced in mid-1942 reduced armor to 75mm front and weight to 42 tons, improving speed and reliability. Over 1,300 KV-1S were built through 1943. By late 1943, the KV series was replaced by the IS series. The KV-85 was created as an interim step in 1943, while IS tanks were being developed. It mounted the 85mm D5T gun in a new turret, with three-man crew and proper commander's cupola. Only 148 were built from August to October 1943 before production switched to IS-2. Weighing approximately 46 tons with 75mm front hull and a 100mm front turret armor, the 85mm gun could penetrate around 100mm at 500m. It could deal with Panzer IV or Stug III easily and penetrate Tiger I from the side. KV-85 saw action in late 1943 on the Dynaper front, filling the gap for six to eight months until IS-2 arrived. 
The IS-1 featured a revolutionary new hull with 120mm nose armor at improved angles and new torsion bar suspension. It mounted the same 85mm D5T gun as the KV-85. Weighing approximately 44 tons, about 207 were built from late 1943 into early 1944. However, the decision was made to upgun to 122mm, so IS-1s had a short combat life. The IS-2 became the iconic Soviet heavy tank of World War II, armed with a 122mm D25T gun. The 122mm could penetrate around 160mm of vertical armor at 500 meters, handling Panthers and Tigers at normal combat distances. Its 25kg HE shell could demolish bunkers. The IS-2 model 1944 adopted a single pike nose angled 120mm glasses. Weighing 46 to 47 tons with a 520 horsepower V2 IS engine, it achieved around 37 kilometers per hour. The two-part ammunition resulted in a slow rate of fire, about 1.5 to 2 rounds per minute, with only 28 rounds carried. IS-2 started entering combat in February-March 1944. Against German armor, they proved deadly. With accounts of IS-2s destroying Panthers and Tiger IIs, the 122mm AP could penetrate Tiger I front at approximately 1,000 meters. By Berlin in April-May 1945, IS-2s were at the forefront blasting bunkers. About 3,800 were built between early 1944 and war's end equipping around 40 guards heavy tank regiments or brigades. The IS-3 featured an advanced pike nose hull and dome-shaped turret. Introduced in mid-1945, it was too late for European combat. Its appearance at the Berlin Victory Parade in September 1945 influenced post-war tank designs worldwide. About 2,311 were built in 1945-46, to with around 200 finished by VJ Day. The T-40 in 1940 had more armor up to 13 millimeters and carried a 12.7 millimeter DSHK heavy machine gun. Only 222 were built before war demands forced changes. The design morphed into the non-amphibious T-60. Some T-40s fought in 1941 during the battle for Moscow. By mid-1942, virtually all amphibious tanks were gone from frontline units. The T-60 was a small 6.5-ton expedient design using automotive components including a gas truck engine of 70 horsepower. Armament was a 20 millimeter TNS Ocho cannon and 7.62 millimeter machine gun. The 20 millimeter could only pierce approximately 15 millimeters at 500 meters. Production began September 1941 with around 5,920 built by end of 1942. T-60s fought in most 1942 operations as scout tanks and convoy escorts. They suffered terribly against any anti-tank weapon. The T-50 was arguably the most advanced pre-war light tank design intended to replace both T-26 and BT tanks. Appearing in 1940, it had 14-ton weight with well-sloped 40mm front armor, a 45mm gun, and a three-man turret. Rare for a light tank, powered by a V4 diesel delivering 300 horsepower, it achieved approximately 60 kilometers per hour. Only 69 were built due to manufacturing difficulties and war urgency. A handful saw combat in late 1941 and 1942, particularly around Karelia and Leningrad, where their armor served well against 37mm guns. By 1943, most were destroyed or relegated to training. The T-70 mounted a 45mm gun providing a proper anti-tank weapon. Armor was slightly thicker at the 35mm front with a fully enclosed turret and two Gaz-202 engines giving 140 horsepower combined, propelling the 9.2-ton tank. Started production spring 1942 with around 8,200 built. A battalion of T-70s fought at Kursk in July 1943, but suffered high losses. Production ceased late 1943. The T-80 in 1943 was basically a T-70 with a proper two-man turret. About 120 were built before the decision was made that no more light tanks were needed. The T-70 chassis became the basis for the Su-76 self-propelled gun produced in large numbers over 14,000. The T-44 was developed in 1944 with revolutionary redesign featuring transversely mounted engine, allowing elimination of the drive shaft tunnel and lowering hull profile. It had improved armor with 75mm glacis at improved angles and initially mounted the same 85mm gun in a more compact turret. It weighed 32 tons. Production started in 1944 with 350 built by the end of 1945. It saw extremely limited service with none confirmed in combat during World War II, though it formed the basis for the post-war T-54-55 series. That's all for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you won't miss the next one.